Ireland 13, England 9, the Six Nation ends on a high for Joe Schmidt's team, who deny England the Grand Slam and a world record 19 win, although they did collect the trophy here in Dublin. It was some game, Luke Fitzgerald, um, here for the left wing for Erlingus, and I mean, if Ireland were going to finish in any way, that was the way to do it. They sign off, they don't get the trophy or anything like that, but they sign off on a bit of a high. Absolutely, you know, and I think um, given, you know, the, uh, I suppose the championship we've had, the expectation we had coming into it, uh, and kind of where we ended up on the last weekend of it, and, uh, you know, we, we've been quite deflated, and I think rightly so. Uh, I feel like the team is, was probably, that was more a reflection of what the team is really about than, than last week or, or than Scotland. Um, and I was delighted for the lads. I thought they never really looked, they had a bit of a stranglehold on the game, which is yeah. very odd. Usually you kind of feel that off, you know, a big English pack. They usually do that to other teams, but I thought defensively we were superb. I thought in the air, some of the kicking wasn't unbelievable, but the kick chase was incredible. I thought we got all the scraps, as, uh, as Joe Schmidt calls it, all the, all the loose ball on the yeah. ground. Um, and I thought that was the difference. It was those little things that, that made the big difference. And I thought we looked really up for the fight. It was great. I was delighted for a lot of people. I think, you know, Pete O'Mahony, that would have been a really tough championship. I can, I can empathise to a certain extent yeah. where you're on the bench or you're on the, on the peripheries and you feel like you should be in. So he did great. And, and I was delighted for him and a couple of other guys out there. I think both of us have called for Peter to be included. And it was very hard to pick who would be dropped for him. And, and in the end, it was Jamie Heaslip getting, you know, pulling up late in the warm-up that handed him in his chance. A little bit like Australia here when he got onto the bench as a result of Sean, o Sean O'Brien, I think, getting injured in November. And again, he proved why they're just a better team when he's in it. Look, it's so hard to say. I think today was a great day for him. Yeah. Look, Pete's a pal, so I was delighted on a personal yeah. front. And I think, um, you know, he, it would have been tough for him sitting out the whole championship. He's a brilliant player. He's, you know, Munster's captain. Uh, and he's a real leader and, and to be sitting out for that long would have been really tough but look he showed what he's about and I think today um, you know especially how the line out went last week it's a real strength of his game uh, I, I thought it was perfectly suited for him to come in and I thought yeah. he had a, a monster game and, and, and rightfully he was man of the match yeah. on, on the day uh, I think there's another couple of guys out there we have to mention the front row uh, I thought they were outstanding uh, to a man tight for long 75 minutes at whatever he is he must be about 20 stone of Wexford yeah. beef uh, he was it was an incredible shift I thought Jack McGrath bounced back well he had a really good game Hakeem was brilliant when he came on and Bessie uh, you know he was a bit of a warrior out there and even the bit Scannell came on look, they were the front row is yeah. such a strong part of the team now and I think that's it's it's a real cornerstone something you can rely on in tight matches and I think you know going into you know I suppose we're into a world, next World Cup cycle now we're kind of halfway through looks like it's going to be a real strong strong area for the team into, going into the World Cup like um, Peter Manny would, would certainly be my cap Ireland captain going forward I just think he brings so much to the party but Rory Best stepped up. He threw a ridiculous pass in that first half. I think he might have been concussed at the time. We're not really sure. <laughs> like he got, came back on after his HIA. But they just seemed to just have that little bit of accuracy that they missed in Cardiff. Was it, I mean, there wasn't that much of a difference between the level of intensity they brought to the table. No. They just pulled it off that little bit more. No, you're 100% you're right, Rory. Uh, I, I think... Um, like it's really fine margins yeah. I mean look I thought we were a lot better than them today I know they had that little bit of a purple patch it looked like they were slightly getting on top but I thought we arrested that back you know quite easily actually in the end and we ended up you know pressuring them at the end of the game I thought that's, that was more a reflection of, of the game uh, and I think last week it was fine margins you know we yeah. still could have won that game we didn't play great and I think England if you look at them throughout the championship they've had a few of those fine margins and they've and, and they've you know they've I suppose capitalised on them and they've got them so it's fine margins. This is a really hard championship to win. And I think, look, in saying how great Ireland were, you have to give credit to England over the championship. They, they won those those fine margins. Course, That's yeah. something that Ireland will definitely learn from. I think guys like Gary Ringrose, uh, Luke McGrath came on the pitch, Kieran Marmion. You know, there was loads of young guys kind of stepped up. And I think it's a really great reflection. I think Joe Schmidt will you know, probably be disappointed with the championship. And there's a huge amount of potential in the squad in terms of, you know, we thought coming into the championship, you know, with England and France at home, we could definitely do it this year. And they could have. They look back and yeah. say they could have. But in the grand scheme of things, he was saying he wants to develop a squad. And I think he's got that now. I think he's got a lot of guys who've had a taste of a big day out here, a really tight championship win. And I think, you know, we should be positive going forward. I know we were disappointed last week, but, you know, I think we have to keep a level head even in, in those. We were very, yeah. we almost won those ones, having not played very well. I know there was a couple of crazy goals for Josh Mintz. I don't think anyone was ever really uh, seriously contemplating that he wasn't going to be around until 2019. Like he's a brilliant coach and everyone knows it. The team did, it, it, it all did come down to this performance. Whatever about the result, this performance to just finish off on a high because it's eight months until that squad are back together. Some lads will go off with the Lions, a mm. couple of new caps in Japan. But I'll take you to the, to the halfbacks. We, the most, one of the most experienced men out there, he captained the team while Rory Best was out on the pitch. He took a lot of treatment and he got up after being hit late and nailed the winning penalty, what, you know, what turned out to be the winning penalty. And beside him, he had a guy who Joe clearly hasn't really had a huge amount of faith in over the years. He's nowhere near 
in, you know, what Conor Murray can produce in Kieran Marmion. But he was, I thought he was really stepped up today, particularly in defence. I thought he made a lot of tackles, uh, key tackles as well. Joe, you know, was really worried on, on Thursday when he lost Conor Murray. But now he knows that Kieran Marmion can do a job for him. It might not be a Conor Murray job, but he offers something. And, and that's got to be a huge investment for the future at that, in that really pivotal position. And then Luke McGrath comes on and, you know, nails a kick at the end. Look, I think you're you're so right there, and I think he will be delighted with that. I think that's something that like it's such an important part of the team. You get all your rhythm from your halfback. You get a huge amount of confidence from them, especially you know I thought we probably did miss Connor's kicking just a little bit today. Yeah. But I still thought Kieran did a really good job, and I, I touched on it last week. I felt I would have been in probably the same camp as Joe. I probably would have had my doubts, uh, especially about the technical aspects of, sure. of Kieran's game, his passing, and, and probably his kicking. And I think I still think there's a journey for him to go on that. I think Luke McGrath's on that journey as well. And I think they'll be probably vying for that spot behind Connor for a while, but. Look, I think they're both great little players. Yeah. Jesus, like they're really up for the fight. Little terriers around the pitch, both great tacklers, um, both really fit, really committed. Uh, they give the team great tempo when it's going forward. I just think the technical side is the last little bit of the jigsaw for those guys. And I think once they have that, and they look like they're almost there for me, um, I think we're, we look in a great place. And we look like we have depth in every position now. And confidence will flow as a result of that. I mean, Eddie Jones said this was like a World Cup final and you're never at 100% in the World Cup final. You know, if Ireland do get to the latter stages of the World Cup in Japan and Conor Murray goes down, they need to have guys ready and that, that'll really, really stand to them. Going forward to Japan, um, you're going to looking at the likes of Dan Levy getting his goal today. Players like that, you know, Joe can really add to that depth and then I know you're not a huge fan of pro the project player idea as a whole, but you've got a couple of really serious quality players coming on stream in November as well. This is all... You know, again, if they'd lost today, we, you know, I would have been the first Doom and Gloom merchant. But like the fact that they finished today, that they have a chance to build a squad into November, this was really important stepping stone on the way to that, isn't it? So you go off in a positive, yeah. then you build a squad, and then you, you just keep growing. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think, um, you know, while we want to have two guys, I think really what Joe is thinking in his own mind, if I was you know, making a read on it from a little bit of far now that I'm, that I'm out of the picture, I think they probably want about th three guys, really. You know, I think that looks like it's essential because I, I think Eddie Jones is right. You're not going to be at 100% when you get to that point. Yeah. So realistically, you know, and in a game like this, you have to use 23 guys. It just doesn't look like you can't. You can do that. You can get by with 15 guys in. We just can't do it. So, you know, if one of your key guys goes down, you still need to have two guys who can come in and do a job for you there. And I think we're we're, we're working towards. I think we're almost there. Um, and I think it look in, in terms of the the, the tour in the summer. I absolutely would use that as an opportunity to get guys like Sweetenham uh, look in. I think he's a guy Joe will like a lot because he's excellent in the air. You know, obviously a lot of attacking flair. I still think he's you know a bit to go defensively in terms of his positioning, but you know he's an exciting prospect. And he's mm. something I'd love to see kind of go on and progress. Um, I thought Andrew Conway as well. We didn't really mention him, but he got his first cap really well. and he did really well yeah. when he came on. I, I thought that was brilliant. Um, so yeah, look, that's a big opportunity for him to blood a lot of those guys. And I think um, what's really exciting for me as well is the age profile. You got you know Ty Furlong, you know Jack McGrath's a young enough fella as well. Scannell's, you know, those yeah. guys are going to be around for for a long time now. Uh, you know, we'll have Sean Cronin to come back in. Uh, you know, Alton Delan as well. Loads of young guys uh, that are kind of in and around, and they have been around the setup and got a bit of a taste of this Ireland team being successful, whether it be you know in November against New Zealand uh, or, or here against England, who are let's face it, are really they're they're a quality squad. They're they're a real Rolls Royce outfit. I think uh, I'd say they were a little bit disappointed with today. I would say the conditions with the with the type of team they have probably didn't really suit them yeah. uh, you know that 10-12 axis is really dangerous but in these kind of conditions against an Irish defence that wasn't given the momentum in the tight channels they never got a chance for that front football and every time they tried to get out wide Ireland's defence just kind of smothered them and they made a lot of mistakes out there so um, I, I think we you know I think they are a brilliant team uh, I thought we did brilliant today uh, but even still the conditions definitely played a part and I thought we played them really really well got a word on Johnny I mean he, he took, came in for some serious treatment out there but I, I was just really impressed with the way he keeps getting back up got 80 minutes and I think he cemented his place on the I mean, if it was ever in doubt, it spent the place in that plane for the Lions, probably alongside your, or, uh, Owen Farrell, though I thought it was very good as well. Absolutely, I thought they were both excellent. I could see that being the 10-12 axis, although I would say Robbie Henshaw did a bit of a number on him today. I thought Robbie yeah. Henshaw was brilliant. And I thought he was brilliant last week. I know he made that one mistake, um, you know, for that mall. And we talked about it last week in, on the left wing that, uh, a personal opinion, I thought he was Ireland's best player on the yeah. pitch last week. He's becoming week. a leader, just, isn't he, Robbie? Oh, I think so, yeah. And he's a quiet guy. Uh, always, for me, more important to have to, to lead by actions. And geez, some of his defensive hits, like he's just so up for the fight out yeah. there. I thought he was brilliant again today. Um, so he's a definite contender in there. It's just about what kind of team you want to you want to have out in the pitch there. I think Farrell is... A classy player yeah you know obviously we have the kick and whoever's 10 or you know we're gonna have a great kicker there I think it's gonna looks like it's gonna be him or Johnny uh, for me I don't think Lee Happen will start in the team um, but 
it's it's where you play him. I think I, I'd be trying to fit him in, uh, even though I think Robbie's very tight there. It's it's a tight call, and, and you know Robbie's beating the All Blacks as well. We've got to remember that. Sure. So that's going to be important out there. And you know I think it probably it, there's a possibility it might come down to conditions. If the conditions are uh, decent out there, he might go with Farrell and say we might want to get it to those wider channels and, and be a bit more expansive. If it's tight and it's a bit attritional, he might go with Robbie. So interesting call for him to make. Yeah, good choices for Warren Gatland to have. Mm. I suppose we finish up by just looking back on this championship as a whole. I think Ireland finish on a high will be in pretty good form tonight as they go, you know, head off for a well-deserved few points. But they'll look back on the whole thing. Oh, Jesus! Particularly Murrayfield. How did that yeah. get away from us? This is the level of performance we want to see from this Ireland team. It's what I think was close to what they did in Chicago, maybe not in an attacking sense, but in terms of intensity. They're really consistent in terms of their levels of intensity. They just need to fine-tune that bit of accuracy. And they're not far away from what the best teams, the two best teams in the world, they've, they've, they've turned over on the cusp of 19 wins in a row. That's the thing. I mean, they're getting hammered a little bit, but it's because we expect so much of them because we know what they produce or they can produce. Yeah, look, they're definitely they're they're capable of that. You know, every week. And, and what I think is so great about about this team and why I'm so positive about where it can go is because, like you said, they can produce that intensity every week. Like that's not up, that's not in question anymore. And even in Murrayfield, obviously they you know they got off to a bad start there, and maybe the, that was probably the one area where they'd be really disappointed because they were probably lacking a little bit of intensity and focus uh, at the start of that game. But we can't accuse them of not having intensity throughout the rest of the championship. And I think it's like you said, it's those little subtle things. It's finding a balance between, uh, you know, playing the ball out of those shapes. I, th I still think there's a big, they're having a bit of a, an issue shortening up the defensive line uh, in attack. And it means that the backs are always attacking with the, you know, against the same numbers or even yeah. when they're down numbers. So it's really hard to break teams down. Um, and, and I think that's something, you know, they need to get that ball carrier carrying outside. I thought Sean O'Brien had a couple of good ones because of what it does, it interests the outside defender and shortens the line. Yeah. I think the little tip on is important important for them to do as well. Yeah. It's that little bit of subtlety in there Jared that we've Payne talked as, about. as a second receiver really added something a little bit to I, I think so, yeah. Like I think if you're going to play the two guys in the centre, I think they're both they're both brilliant players. I think Gary's going to get a lot better as well. Uh, you know, while he's working out that playmaking role, which is very important for him to do uh, if he wants to be one of the great centres there, because uh, he's got everything else. Like yeah. he's, a, he's, de he's deceptive, he's a deceptive runner, he's a great tackler, uh, he's up for the fight, very fit and, and strong. Um, it's that little bit of playmaking. While he's doing that, we probably need to have, it looks, it looks to me like Jared Payne made a bit of a difference there. You could see some of the offloading, you know, he was a threat to, with ball hand, even though he was, he, like, he, you know, he was on his last legs yeah, there. He looked yeah. like he was yeah, struggling. 10 minutes. Well, there was one phase of play that must have gone out four or five minutes and he just looked, he, he was out on his feet and it was a real Trojan effort by, by him to come yeah. back in and play an international from really the wilderness because yeah. that serious injury in November. So a huge effort by him, but I think him or, or, or you know, looks like someone, we need just one more playmaker out there and I think that he, he provides that role and he'd be a guy I'd be picking there, um, maybe Zebo either, just because they're handling abilities. So that's going to be an important part for them, you know, in terms of growing, in terms of getting to that next level and being a bit more clinical than 22. Yeah. Uh, and I think once they do those those two little bits of of, of, of kind of subtlety and a bit of balance, they'll be really hard to stop. And I think they will go there. Well, that's it for the Six Nations this year. Second place finish for Ireland, just behind England, and probably about right. Thanks for joining us.